Hello and welcome to my build showcase for Explosive Aero Ballistas in patch 317, Arch Nemesis slash uh, whatever the expansion's called, I forget. I, I, I had no plans of making this video. The build that I'm using, like Explosive Aero, is, has been so incredibly good that I thought to myself, like, I have to show somebody. Like, I have to make a video. I have to talk about how good this build is because it's insane. Before I get into anything, I want to make a few disclaimers. First of all, um, in terms of, like, Path of Exile content creators, I would say that I am in incredibly inexperienced compared to just about every one of them. Uh, I have had some traction on a few of my videos, which is completely unwarranted because you know, to be honest, this game is so insanely complex. I do not, I do not believe that I am at all experienced enough to actually make good videos. What I can do is give you a perspective from a beginner player, which is hilarious because I have thousands of hours. But <laughs> basically, you know, I just want to get it right out. Of, I want to get it right out of the way and just tell you that I, I don't exactly know all of the intricacies of what I'm talking about because this whole entire build that I that I have so far, a one week into the league. Everything you're going to be seeing in the video is has been um, recorded um, a day before. Like, I recorded all this stuff uh, yesterday, so technically this is only like six days into the league and I and my build is at this point, which is, which is unbelievable to me. I've never been able to have this much success this early in a league. It's just amazing. All of my success with this league and whatever this, however this video uh, does, I don't know, but all of this is attributed to Palestron. If you don't know who Palestron is, POE YouTuber, he made a uh, leak start video for this build because um, in the patch notes, everyone was theorizing that this build was going to be strong as he, and he made a video and it was a fantastic video. Uh, th his sort of strategy for leak starting was perfect. It was easy to follow. Step-by-step -step important instructions. Just all the, all the things you really need to know and then he kind of allowed you to fill in the blanks with whatever game knowledge you might have already. But for the most part, I would say that it's a fantastic video to watch if you would like to get a better understanding for this build. But what I am planning on doing is giving you my perspective of how it's gone. And I'm gonna talk about all the pros of this build that he didn't cover uh, because there's so many different pros and the cons is hilariously small. The, like the list of cons is so small, it's it's laughable. I've never seen a build like this. The really cool thing about PoE is that like most builds can't do everything. There are usually some areas of the game that builds will struggle with. But to be completely honest with you, this build so far seems like it solves that problem. I can't even think of one major con. Uh, but we'll get into that later. Basically, what you're what you're, what you're looking at right now is uh, some B-roll that I recorded of myself playing a tier 16 map, Ashen Wood, and this was actually a Baron uh, Citadel map, the new Conqueror maps, the way that you fight Cirrus. You know, it's a fairly juiced map, and my Atlas is crazy juiced with, like, essences and uh, strong boxes and Blight. Blight is insane this league, uh, especially if you have Beyond on your map. You can see there, there's a ton of massive packs of monsters. Everything's blowing up, everything's burning, everything's dying, and I'm taking... Very little damage. I have. I don't even have that much life, but I'm still tanky as fuck, which we'll talk about. Which is one of my favorite things about the build is how tanky it is. So basically, I'm just gonna go up and down the list. I, I took some some time to think about the list of cons or pros and cons here. I'm probably missing a lot of things, but I'm just gonna go down my list in no particular order, and I'm just gonna talk about why this build is so great while uh, you know you're watching it perform it, uh, of what I was doing last night. Um, so first of all, like. Playing Holy Flame Totem Flame Wall is so strong. It's such an easy league start combo. You know, if you watch the Palestron video, you'll you will really understand why it's so good because it rich it just is like literally zero effort investing in your gear, especially because there's a really good recipe to uh, guarantee yourself a wand that has fire damage added to spells, which he covers and he tells you exactly what to look out for to get those wands. It's fantastic, and that boosts your DPS with Flame Wall and Holy Flame Totem through the roof. To the point where um, the, whole, the the beginning of the game is a, is a f joke, which is great. You know that's what you want. You want everything to be easy so you can get through it as fast as possible. We have all leveled the characters multiple times before, and the great thing about this is that the league start is smooth and incredibly easy, and it transitions into EA ballistas early, which is cool, and uh, it, it's a pretty smooth transition. All of this translates to is easy league start, and the acts are a breeze. To get the build off the ground. 
and start mapping, like do, doing white maps and yellow maps. I don't have any footage of this, sorry. But it's incredibly effective and incredibly good with some very cheap, unique items. I'm talking about the Storm Cloud, a cheap ass unique item. It's it's so available, it's hilarious. You can get a perfectly rolled one for like 2C and the Skirmish, the Quiver, the Skirmish Quiver, also incredibly cheap, also incredibly good for the build. Waza. And then you have an item like the Goal, very cheap. And then you have a Diet and Dawn, which at the start of the league was actually expensive. I, I bought my Diet and Dawn pretty late because it was 45C. I simply didn't have that. But I think last time I checked right now, it's like 5 Chaos. So, like, you know, you are you are definitely going to get 5C just from doing a league mechanic before you get to mapping. So, like, there you go. And and that belt is best in slot. We will keep that. As, as far as I'm aware, we keep, we, we keep the Diet and Dawn for the whole time we play the game until maybe you get some insanely good rare belt or something. But the Diet and Dawn is amazing. The goal is amazing. Storm Cloud's amazing, Skirmish is amazing, and there's also a, a very cheap ring uh, that you can use that's very amazing. I'm still using it. It's like 2C and it's a really good ring. So what I'm trying to say here is to, to get your build mapping, it's like 6C total investment, which is, or sorry, like I guess 8 or 9, which is just insanely, uh, that, that's such good value. And um, of course you can use a tabula as well if you'd like, but it's not even that important to be honest, to have a 6 link at the, at the beginning of mapping. Um, but yeah, it's crazy. The build is very good at the beginning of the game. That transitions pretty well into the next thing I'd like to talk about. One of my favorite things about this build is that there's only one six link required, which means your body armor is free to be not a six link. And so what does that mean? Well, that means you can get a really good body armor for cheap because the way body armors work in the game is like oftentimes you'll see a really good rare body armor on the ground and the sad reality is, because it's so expensive to six link something, people will sell body armors that have insanely good mods, like tier one life, percentage life, spell suppression, like tier two reses. They'll sell these body armors for really cheap compared to what the mods are actually doing, like 40, 50 C for these things, just because they're not going to six link them themselves, you know? You know, so people buy the body armors, and then most builds, like almost every other build I've ever played, has like a mandatory six link body armor. So of course you're gonna save up money and then you're gonna pay the five X to six link it yourself. That's just typically how it works. But this build is completely different than that. You literally have auras in your body armor, not linked to anything. I, I suppose later you could link it to an Enlighten um, and maybe work in some more auras or something, I don't know. But it works out completely perfectly to have the auras that we have, which is uh, Grace, Purity of Elements, Determination, uh, Defiance Banner, um, Precision. So all of these auras in conjunction with um, some passes on your tree to, to help the mana reservation efficiency uh, and an amulet that you will eventually uh, be using. It comes out to be a perfect amount of mana and you have five auras, you have no mana. The only mana I have is for my frost bomb. So yeah, everything's on life tap and you have strong auras. This translates to an insane amount of armor, an insane amount of evasion. Because of all the armor you have, like I have 30k armor, 30k evasion, uh, you end up getting a Molten Shell that's 10k capped, which is amazing. You have a 10k damage barrier. You put that on your movement skill, you don't even think about it. It just, it just activates whenever it's off cooldown. So, you know, if you happen to get hit when that's, when that's available, chances are you're not going to die. As well as the fact that we have Primal Aegis, so there's another like 2.5k damage shield. It ends up just being crazy as f so tanky. I've never been more tanky. And part of the reason why it's tanky is because we also have 100% um, spell suppression. That's great. And we have 100% elemental ailment avoidance. There's just so many things about this build that is so nice. You're never going to be frozen. You're never going to be shocked. You're never going to be burning unless you step on burning ground. Uh, it's crazy how, how much quality of life that translates into. So what you're seeing, I'm just like walking into massive packs of mobs. Also, one more thing to point out is because we have the node on our tree that makes our totems taunt enemies, as long as you don't have the mod on your map that says enemies can't be taunted, watch out for that. When you place a totem, you're typically not going to be attacked by anything. So not only are we really, really tanky, oftentimes we're not even being hit. The build feels invulnerable, seriously. The only times I've ever died is when I've done something really dumb and it's completely my fault. I'm killing my build. My build's not gonna die. This build is not gonna die. If I play the game correctly, 
the build's never gonna die, okay? It's that simple. I mean, I've, I'm tanking Cirrus for f**k's sake. <laughs> Anyways, <clears throat> what else is there to talk about here? So, the goal, right? What the f is this unique? I never knew it existed. It is f batch crazy. This thing will spawn lesser shrines when you kill enemies. The chance at which they drop seems to be about like one every pack of enemies. A large part as to why this is good is because with the new league we have the Atlas Passive Tree and if you allocate the shrine nodes, which I'm sure everyone's overlooking because who the f cares about shrines, right? But if you actually read what, read what they say, um, they give you increased effect of shrines, they give you increased duration of shrines. So when you have lesser shrines combined with the actual shrines in the map, because there will be multiple different natural shrines with these nodes allocated in every one of your maps. It basically turns you into a headhunter build for the low, low cost of one chaos. The goal is cheap and it gives you a headhunter. It's ridiculous. Your attack speed, your action speed, your movement speed is going to go through the roof. You're, you're going to get so much more life. You're going to get so much more evasion. You're going to have res at 90%. I mean, it is actually broken as fuck. Seriously, the goal is so good and it just so happens that the goal itself like the actual mods of the goal are pretty good for our build as well So it, it's like a match made in heaven seriously, so flasks aren't really important like they're not super important There's no like there's uh, it, from what I can tell at least there's no flasks that are like a staple to the build You can just do whatever the fuck you want to obviously you're gonna want to you're gonna want to continue your armor stacking and your evasion stacking by getting a jade flask and a granite flask that's gonna be great, um, but as far as like rolling the flasks, like what mods you need on them, just fuck around with it, you know, have fun. Basically, you know, you're probably gonna want to have at least like a, a bleeding flask mandatory, but then everything else is just whatever, you know. If you want to roll attack speed or movement speed on all your flasks, it's totally fine. Just do whatever you want. That's what's great. It's it's like you have flask freedom. So in terms of gearing the build, this build's a little bit different because the way EA ballistas works is your ballistas will fire depending on your attack speed, your attack rate, and the firing of the blisters applies fuses, the fuses explode, and then the explosion causes ignite. So what that means is, um, attack speed is actually incredibly important, wh wherever you can get it, and accuracies are really important. You, you really want to prioritize accuracy in your build, you want to get to the 100% chance to hit, and then you want to go even further because you have that other modifier which is chance to hit evasive monsters. It's kind of cool how you really want to push accuracy as much as possible because that will that will in turn increase your DPS. The, the, the best way to do DPS is to hit monsters, and if you're missing, then that's obviously not going to do DPS. You want to be able to apply 20 fuses. 20 fuses is a max fuse that is the maximum number that gets applied, which means that there is actually the possibility of you having too much accuracy or too much attack speed. If you're applying more fuses than you need to, it's not going to change your DPS at all. Which is interesting because it, it, it sort of gives you something to work towards. If you add something to your build that gives you a bunch of accuracy, maybe you can remove the other thing you had in your build that gave you accuracy previously, and you can upgrade that with something else that gives you just straight up fire damage or damage over time or whatever. So it, it, it's kind of an interesting... It's, it's sort of an interesting thing where I'm, I'm thinking about gear in a way that I never had before. Because I'm trying to work out like where can I leap where can I lose accuracy, where can I lose attack speed, where can I gain damage in other areas, and how does it all work together perfectly to keep myself at a hundred percent chance of hit, keep myself at a high attack rate so that I'm applying 20 fuses. I don't know. You might not like that, but I think that's kind of cool. Uh, anyways, um, as far as the actual play style, you're placing totems and then you're moving. Placing of the totem takes a little bit of time. It's really quick, honestly, but it does take some time. You have to stop a, for, a, for a split second. And then the totems have to basically fire. And then when they're, when they're done firing, the fuses have to be applied all the way to 20. And then the fuses explode. So there actually is a um, significant amount of time in between you casting an ability and then that ability dealing the full damage. What that means is, by the time you're done casting your totem from the ground, you have already moved off screen, essentially, if you're, you know, trying to go really fast. This is great for one reason, and this this actually um, segues into one of the only cons in the build. So it's great because it gives us, like, easy DPS uptime while we're dodging whatever's going on. So for bossing, it's a f 
It's amazing. You put your you put your totems down in the general area of where the boss is going to be. Your totems do all the work, and as long as you've hit them with like your curse, uh, as long as you've hit them with your flame ability, and um, there's also combustion that you can apply with the trap. As long as you as long as that's good, you're done. You're done DPSing. Like there's nothing else you need to do. So you know, just don't die. <laughs> It's way easier to not die to a boss when you're focusing on not dying instead of focusing on DPSing. So one thing I love about this build is you put your totems down and and then you just move. You dodge things. You, you, you get yourself into a good position in the map. You can even just f*** off, you know? Like as long as your totems aren't unloaded, which is which you have to go pretty far for that to happen by the way, you can just hide. <laughs> Put your totems down and then f off. Like, seriously, it's great. Um, so anyways, the con, the reason why this is a con is because you're, you know, especially if you have the goal of giving you, um, like, max movement speed, you put some totems down and then you're gone. And stuff, like, loot will drop when the enemies die behind you. So the only con, the only real con is that it, it's a little bit annoying to backtrack for loot. That's honestly it. <laughs> Which is f crazy that that's the only con because it's not even a big deal like whatever you hear a noise you turn around it's, it's that simple right um what else is there what else is there to really talk about here um one thing i will mention is that frost bomb can fit in our build quite quite easily uh we have five auras which means in our chest as long as you have six sockets you have a free socket you don't need to get yourself a um you don't need to sacrifice a socket for a frost bomb you don't need to get yourself an unset ring for frost for frost bomb. Um, you can actually just put it on your body armor, and it's you know keep it level one doesn't matter because the reason why that's important is because with this league you have a lot of modifiers that actually buff healing for enemies like crazy. Consecrated ground is f busted. Uh, for example, Drox gets like three to four million HP regen per second when he's in his bubble phase. If he's on consecrated ground, not to mention you got Maven as well healing the fuck out of these bosses. So, and of course the league mechanic. A lot of times you'll build a league mechanic monster and you won't realize that you made him essentially invulnerable sometimes while also healing. Uh, but frost bomb is great because it reduces their healing by 75%. Maybe it's 80%. I can't remember. But it basically gives you the ability to continue DPSing even while they're healing like crazy. So frost bomb is great. And it fits in the build. It fits in the build pretty nicely. The only, the other thing I should mention is that there are actually some good chase items with, with this build as well. There's a ring called the Polaric Devastation. This ring is about six to seven exalts. Last time I checked, and it's a f***ing amazing ring. It gives us insane DPS increase. And you know, there's one of your chase items. Uh, you also have an Unnatural Instinct. The Unnatural Instinct is great. It doesn't really do all that much. But it, but the, the best thing that it does for us is it frees up some passive nodes, so we can put those passives somewhere else. That's really the, the the main power, in my opinion, is being able to put those three nodes somewhere else. Uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? What else? What else? Um, yeah. So like I mentioned earlier, accuracy is really important and attack speed is really important. But the really cool thing about this build is that there's actually multiple different ways to go about the tree. And, uh, for example, like split personality is something you can put in the tree if you want. And split personality can give you a metric f ton of accuracy if you need accuracy. If you have accuracy on your gear already, like if you've gotten some good rolls, if you've crafted it yourself or something, or you've found some nice item on the market, if you don't need accuracy, then you can put something else in there. So I have a lot of accuracy. I don't need any, I don't need the split personality. Uh, so instead I just put the rain of splinters in that slot. You know, it's, it's kind of a placeholder until I get like a Watcher's Eye or something. Uh, because Reign of Splinters isn't really that great, but it, it's just cool for clearing. It's actually not good for, for boss DPS. So yeah, like if you need to solve your accuracy problem, there's actually a lot of different ways to do it. It's not just gear. You can solve it on your tree, you can move some nodes around and get some accuracy points. Um, so that's cool. And the, the next thing I want to talk about is that the specific mechanics of the build, the fact that you have six ballistas that you can put anywhere you want, and the fact that they last pretty long, I think it's like 30 seconds or something, uh, what this means is this makes the build incredibly good for what I call stationary content. I don't know if there's actually a word for it, but the kind of content where everything is kind of happening in one general area, 
it makes this build so good. Like, I'm talking blight maps, I'm talking simulacrums, or el the elder fight is a fucking joke <laughs> with this build. It's hilarious. Um, because basically you just put your, you, you put your ballistas all around you, or you put them wherever they need to be, and then you just stand there and they do all the work. You know, you, you don't really have to move around all that much. You don't have to really dodge anything because your ballistas are taking the brunt of the damage. So, you know, what I'm excited because it, because I love simulacrums. And in the past, I've had builds that weren't really great for simulacrums. For example, Cyclone is a fucking pain in the ass because you have to constantly be moving all over the place to spawn all the, to spawn the monsters. But with your ballistas on the ground, that will actually spawn the monsters. So you don't have to move around the map. You stand near the middle. You walk a little bit on each uh, to each side. You place your ballistas further than where you are. The ballistas spawn the monsters. The ballistas kill the monsters. It's fantastic. Aside from that, I don't really know what else to talk about. I'd like to say, once again, all credits goes to Palestron. And um, if what I've just said, if what I've just told you sounds interesting, if, if, the, if what you're seeing looks like something you want to try, um, then please go watch his videos. He's up, he's uploaded multiple videos where he talks about his thought process and his theory crafting and the evolution of the build as he's changed it up a few times. It really gives you a good understanding of the build in general. You know, he's a cool guy. He has a, he has a really pleasant accent. <laughs> so go check him out. Um, I'm, I'm merely a copycat who, who decided to make a video because it's just so f***ing strong. So yeah, um... That's all I'm going to say.